Hello, hello. I have arrived. Oh dear. Oh. All right, had to adjust my audio settings there a little bit. Shouldn't have any impact on the stream, but I had my audio turned to that, yeah, turned down. Anyway, hello, hello. <laughs> I have arrived. Artist, archivist, VTuber, and tonight, I guess, reader of stories. I was going to say alleged medical professional and amateur tactician, as is the norm with the Arknights, but I don't intend to be doing any combat today. I suppose we also don't do any medical professional tasks either very often, but, you know. So yes, so, today, Arknights, we will be continuing Stories of Afternoon, and presumably we will be concluding Stories of Afternoon. But yes, I don't have plans to do anything else after that. I did want to do, like I mentioned, I used to do little overviews of certain operators and whatnot every now and again. And I had wanted to do that, but I did not have time to compile any enough data to make it worth the time, I think. I had been considering, or I had been trying to, I hadn't been considering it, I had been doing it, uh, I had been doing that a little bit before stream, but then I figured, you know what, by the time I've gotten a clear enough understanding of everything that I want to say to say it, we'll be out of time, so. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. So yes. So, let's see, what else is there to say? Not a whole lot, I suppose. So yes. So again, this is the end of the week for me, so there will be no streams after this. So yeah, up until next week, where we should be resuming the schedule as it was, at roughly 2 p.m. Monday and, or sorry, Tuesday and Saturday, and then a 8.30 p.m. roughly stream on uh, Wednesday. Yeah, the 2 o'clock stream might end up being closer to a 2.30 stream, like it is today, because, I don't know, at least on Saturdays, that is a day that I do work and, you know, I get off work pretty early, as you may have guessed from the fact that it's roughly two and I'm off work. But yes, I guess it's almost three at this point, but anyway, I get off work pretty early on Saturdays. I don't work very long. So, but even, even with that, you know, I still have to get home and have lunch and all that before stream. So I was hoping I could get that done by two o'clock and Part of the reason it was delayed was just because of, of me doing that research that I mentioned. But, yeah. Probably 2.30 is more likely what we would aim for on a Saturday. Well, I suppose I don't work next Saturday, so... Anyway. Beyond that, what else is there to say? Say yes. Yeah, no streams for the rest of the week. Usual schedule next week. Uh, Tuesday and Saturday, we will be doing Arc Nights, as per usual. And then Wednesday, we will be doing, uh, I was going to say VA11 Hall 8, Cyberpunk Bartender Action, but that's not accurate. We stopped playing that game a while ago because we beat it. Uh, we'll be playing Coffee Talk. There we go. That's what the game's called. Coffee Talk with Sheppy Sheps. But yes. So, in other stream-related news, I am up to date now on, uh, VODs, so that's nice. At least I should be. I think, I think I am. I'm pretty sure I am. I seemed to be last time I checked. But yes. So yes, so VODs, schedule, I already mentioned today, and that we wouldn't be streaming for too long. Yeah, I don't know exactly how long these final two chapters of Stories of Afternoon are going to be, but However long they are is how long the stream is going to be, so. I suppose, without further ado, let us get in that. <laughs> Video games. There we go. I just realized, I don't remember if I had the movie up in the previous room, but I guess that doesn't matter, really. Anyway. Video games. Arknights. Asking for trouble. <coughs> Nine thirty nine PM inside the Rhodes Island landship. Phew. Finally finished. Good work, Orchid. 
I've gotten to know you all so well. It's like I'm part of the team now, huh? <laughs> You've really getting, gotten good at this, Orchid. Uh, I'm better the, at this than looking after the circus, that's for sure. Uh, why don't you apply for a transfer to logistics, then? Huh? You know, people like you come out of the uh, more normal world usually end up working in logistics. It's kind of unusual to become a combat operator. We've all been wondering why you decided to go to the front lines, actually. You wonder why, huh? What kind of work would you like to do for Rhodes Island, Orchid? The assessments show you have an aptitude for Originium Arts. If you're interested, we could put you on the front lines. But, since you are a civilian with no relevant combat experience, we still recommend that you join a logistics-related section. Of course, rest assured that even if you got into a combat role, we wouldn't put you in danger. No more than you can handle, anyway. What does logistics do? Well, it's a pretty broad department with a lot of functions, but uh, in general, you can think of it as the jobs that keep Rhodes Island running. Since there are more clerical jobs, it's well suited to people like you, folks used to city life. You mean sitting in an office? I came here for a change. I don't want to spend my life in a cubicle. I... I want to go into a combat role. Are you sure? It can be tough being a frontline operator. Yes, I want to give it a try. Okay, then. I probably I shouldn't tell him I wasn't interested in office work. Let's just say I sort of fell into it. Ah. Uh, yeah, that'll happen if you don't know what you're getting yourself into. Oh, oh, yeah? But I seem to remember we have a way to deal with these sorts of things. Let me take a look here. Ah, yep, yeah, here we go. Combat operators of civilian origin who, within one wor year of working as a combat operator, find themselves unsuited to the role, may apply for a reclassification as a logistics operator. It'll be unconditionally approved. You haven't been here that long, so you should be good to go. Actually, everyone in A6 should be good, uh, except Spot, since he was a Sargon soldier. And even with Spot, I bet we can find a little wiggle room. Oh yeah? I never thought about it before. It's not like our work is any easier than that of a combat operator. Rhodes Island depends on us to keep moving. Yeah, right. Thanks. I'll think about it. Okay, are you done yet? I just finished. Okay. Well, if it isn't little Papakar, is she waiting for you? Yes, I bumped into her on the way and she came along. Now that you mention it, I think I remember you applied for a double room to share with her. Yes. <sighs> that girl is a handful and who sends a child that small out to war anyway? But the rest of the team is either unreliable or even more trouble than she is, so here we are. Orchid, are you done yet? Coming. All right, I'd better go. Don't forget what we talked about. I'll be waiting for an, a for an answer. Right. I don't know if we've talked about Team A6 now that I think about it. I think... I thought we did, but I think we... It might have been Team A4 that I was thinking of. Ah... <sighs> Isn't it ironic? I became a combat operator to ditch the office, and now look at me. Am I doomed to the rat race, no matter what path I take? Orchid, what's a rat race? What's a rat, in fact? We don't have any of those around here. It's a miserable life, sitting in an office for eight hours a day, growing fat and sick, doing tedious, menial labor, and sometimes putting in overtime. Oh. Don't get it. Anyway, Papagar, how did you end up at Rhodes Island? Um, Dr. Calcite and Dr. Ansel bought me. What? Bought? Yeah, I used to work in a lumber yard. One day, Dr. Ansel and Dr. Calcite were passing there, by there and saw me. They played with me all day. The next day, I don't know how or why, but Dr. Calcite bought me. A lumber yard? Yes, my mom and dad sent me to work in the lumber yard when I was very young. The boss was sometimes very mean to me, but at least he fed me. Did you ever see your parents again? Oh, no. 
The boss said my mom and dad went very far away and couldn't come to see me, so I just had to wait. Then Dr. Ansel said that if I was good, Rhodes Island would help me find my mom and dad, and I might see them again someday. Hey, Orchid, why are you hugging me all of a sudden? What's wrong? Nothing. Sometimes a girl needs hugs is all. How would you like to be like those boys and girls back there, doing things in a chair and not needing to run around all the time? Um, Dr. Ansel asked me the same question, but I don't really understand that kind of stuff. I just know I'm pretty strong. But I've been trying really hard to learn to read. Then I can help you and all those boys and girls in the office. Of course. Yeah. Uh, Orchid, what, what happened? You look really sad. Did I say something bad? Not at all. It's my fault. I shouldn't have asked about that. You're always so nice to me, Orchid. You can ask me anything. Okay. Orchid, why are you hugging Papa Car in the middle of the corridor? People might get the wrong idea. <sighs> Don't worry about it. Hi, Catapult. Oh, hi, Papa Car. Are you guys going home? Yes. Now, why are you all sweaty? You better not be here running off to get yourself and, by extension, me into trouble. Come on, Orchid, give me a little credit. I just finished a session with Midnight. A what with Midnight? Huh? Don't tell me you don't know. Unless there's a mission, Midnight works out in the training room every day about this time. I didn't have anything to do today, so he roped me in. Worked my tail off. Finally let me go. Spots there giving him the business now. Why? How should I know? I figured you'd be up on it. I just need to... I just know I need to steer clear of Midnight around 10 o'clock. I, I knew about it. Midnight also got me to join, but then I hit him and he flew away and he didn't ask me again. <laughs> uh, so that's the story. No wonder he dodged the question when I asked if he told you. <laughs> My sides. Alright, as long as you're not making trouble. Why do you always come back to that? This is discrimination, Orchid. You're always so nice to pop a car even when she makes trouble. I'd be so nice to you if you didn't also go and sweetly if you if you'd also go and sweetly apologize every time you did something bad. That's beyond me. And even and if and if I have to apologize for stirring things up, then where's the fun in it? Just stay out of trouble to begin with. You're lucky you're at Rhodes Island. Anywhere else would have Never mind, forget it. Come on, Orchid. Just come out with it. Nowhere else can handle my personality. I don't want to change. Only Rhodes Island would want a freak like me. <laughs> but everybody here is talkative and awesome and the work is good and it pays well. I love it here. <sighs> Great. As long as you're happy. Anyway, hurry back and take a shower. A girl shouldn't be out walking around all sweaty. Sure. Hey, Orchid, the dorms are the other way. I'm going to check out the training room. Oh, Papa Car, why don't you come to my room tonight? I'll tell you a story. Okay. Training room. Did you skip dinner midnight? Kind of weak. My swordsmanship is about agility and cunning. Keep talking. Music to my ears. Ah, ha! Hello, but not bad. I can tell you did eat enough after all. Wow, Midnight and Spot are fighting. Can I? Let's wait for them to finish. Oh. <sighs> Water, please. Here. Here. Thanks. Your military lineage shows, Spot. You're usually so lethargic that you're clearly much better than me at this. You've got something to be proud of. If I, you didn't have the basics, I'd have my comics in one hand while I fought you with the other. Am I so weak? How can I get my point across without hurting your feelings? No need. What? I'm actually curious. Er, wait, that. <laughs> Wrong voice. But I'm actually curious. You were an escort before, right? You've got the fundamentals, I can tell. A couple years of practice. That's not up to military standard, but for a civilian, you can fight. 
Can I take that as a compliment? I'm mostly trying to convince myself that the most useless guy on our team actually has something to offer. Uh, uh. Actually? Midnight! Spot! Huh? Orchid's here. You're boned. Why, why is that? I don't know, but she looks like my mom did whenever things were about to get real bad for me. No, oh, you're wrong about that, and it's my turn to teach you some tricks for dealing with women. <laughs> Good evening, Miss Popcar, Miss Orchid. What are you doing here? As you can see, I'm doing my daily exercise. And why don't I know about this routine? I never thought you'd be interested, Miss Orchid, and it's all on my own time. Fair enough. But we're normal people, and Instructor Doberman made it clear that civilian teams like us won't ever end up on dangerous missions, so what's the point? Oh, good question. Hmm, a truly fantastic question, Orchid. Hmm? Let's take a break for now, shall we, Spot? Yeah, whatever. I'm just here to help out, and I'll go get a comic book to read. Orchid, do you know what the secret to Siska... Apparently, I don't know the secret to pronouncing that word. Orchid, do you know what the secret to success is in my line of work? What are you talking about? That's a rhetorical question. To start things off, I can continue without an answer. I guess the trick is to be handsome first and foremost, and then be a decent talker. No, no, and no. Though I consider myself quite beautiful, and I do know how to pay a compliment. Ugh. What's wrong with Spot? Nothing, just looking at a clown in a whole new light. <laughs> Confidence is very important, but by, the, the, by far the most important is to treat all your clients equally. That is, when you step into my realm, my presence, then, whoever you are, the only thing you are is my client. What's the point of all this? Are you trying to say that everyone's the same to you? Not at all, my dear sweet captain. Clever as you are, you never thought this through. It's not that everyone's the same to me, it's that, simply, everyone's the same. The iron-fisted career woman, tyrant of her office section, could actually just be wearing a mask for the sake of her work. If she wears it long enough, she may forget how to take it back off. The outwardly homely housewife, whose husband likely cheated on her long ago, stays at home, telling no one of her troubles with no choice but to come to drink with me. An ill-tempered fashion designer with a strong woman facade may just fear the gossip of others and the resulting loss of trust. You have a death wish. <laughs> Did you think I was talking about you? People like this abound. Everyone in the city, after unloading their identities and responsibilities, is exactly the same. Each and every one. So, why, at Rhodes Island, would things be any different? Do the elite operators who go diving headlong into a war zone come back and unplug themselves like so much machinery? No, they drink and chat in the bar, they care for their freshly potted plants in the greenhouse, they listen to music, they read. They complain when a mission is too hard or chuckle at how hilariously easy it was. They cry, they laugh, they mope, they hurt, and they die. They're no different from us, are they? You're a boy who knows how to give a speech. Thank you for the compliment. <sighs> that all makes sense, but I still feel like it's not completely true. And I can't blame you for that. My industry, as it is, has always had a bit of an underbelly to it. I have that advantage. But not you, Orchid. You grew up entirely in the light of day. The greatest hardships for you were lower pay than you'd like, insufficiently clear skin, traffic on your commute, those sorts of things. This world of violence and bloodshed is indeed a brave new world for you. But you're here. You've made your choice. Shouldn't you at least try to understand it instead of shackling yourself to the common sense of your past? Common sense of my past. I'm not trying to be preachy. I'm definitely not qualified to preach. But wouldn't the fashion guru of Rhodes Island understand that? Even you know about that, huh? I've talked to quite a few senior operators. I've heard a lot of interesting stories. And you're getting in good with them? 
I get in good with anyone, as long as they understand my language. This is my special power as the Devil of the Eastern Night. Right. So you know perfectly well that the people who ask you to... So you know perfectly well that the people who ask you to design their outfits and give fashion tips are ordinary people like us, don't you? By the way, Spot, you asked me to know why I... F eh, why I knew how to fight when I was just an escort. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot. You wound me. This is a bit of a story, so let's take it to the cafeteria. My treat. Sounds like a pain. Can I pass? I really don't care. <laughs> I'm afraid not. Ugh, I blew it. Should have slipped out halfway through. I said it was my treat, but you could still you could sh still show a little decorum. Do we have to? Mmm, it's so good. Why aren't you eating, Orchid? I never eat after dinner. That's the mark of a modern woman. <clears throat> um, right, back to business then. First of all, if I may be so bold as to ask Orchid, how did you contract Orpathy? If that's too personal a question, you don't have to answer. It's not a great story. Just one day I noticed a little crystalline growth on my body. The doctor said I must have been exposed to some originium without even knowing. I still don't know exactly how I got it. That's it. Ah, uh, I see. No wonder you're having this little crisis. So, let me tell you my experience. There was a younger man working in my club. He was my polar opposite. Bright, sunny disposition, straightforward, instantly likable. Of course, no one work who works in my industry could be called naive, but if, I, but if I'm the type to make malicious assumptions about people, he's the type to trust them. Sounds like the type I would hate. Is that your way of saying you like me, Spot? Orchid, is there really no cure for narcissism? I'll ask medical later. Maybe there's hope. <laughs> as, said, as I said before, I treat all my clients equally meaning I don't change my approach based on one's status or identity. I make an active effort towards that goal, but for him, it was second nature. From my position atop the industry, I could see that he would be the one to surpass me. So that person surpassed Midnight? It can't be that simple. Huh? Yeah, it would be nice to say if that was the whole story. Now that I think about it, I actually did him a disservice. He didn't come from a good family. He needed the money. To him, I must have looked like the king of the world. If I was out of his way, he would have been able to make it in that world. I should have taught him much earlier how to situate himself, how to handle money, and how to be what people needed him to be. Had I done that, maybe we wouldn't have ended up at each other's throats. He was jealous of you, and you didn't notice? He hid it well, or rather, he didn't even notice it himself. It wasn't until he almost killed me the first time that I realized this flaw in my understanding of human nature. I think it's got nothing to do with human nature, you're just too nice. Right? I never thought of you as the type to mentor a newbie. But Midnight is a really good man, I always knew. Thank you, Papa Car. But you said first time, which means there was a second time. Right. He did almost kill me the first time. Almost. I'm confident. Had that been his second attempt to kill a man, I wouldn't be sitting here. But I am. I bet five lung men dollars you chickened out. No, I didn't. It's just I couldn't have expected what happened next. At the time, I saw the world as Orchid does. I never thought of it as a place of malice and bloodshed. I muscled him out of the industry and learned how to handle a sword. I thought that would be enough, I really did. Until one day, I discovered a health problem. Your oropathy. He paid my agent to infect me somehow. The second time he came looking for me, I was, he was infected himself, and he brought his friends with him. I had seen a lot of hate in my work, I thought I understood it, but when it was actually directed at me, I felt it burning in a way I hadn't before imagined. But you won. I did. Even if I can't go toe-to-toe -to 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 with you, I can fight off a dozen thugs and walk away with my life. 
It was then, with my own hands, I took his. Ah! What's wrong, Papa Car? Or midnight. <laughs> Don't cry, Papa Car. Honestly, I should thank him for showing me how immature I was. After that, I learned about a place called Rhodes Island and made up my mind to leave the industry and come all the way here after registering with the office in Higashi. Along the way, I saw a lot and I thought a lot more. I came to Rhodes Island with a deep understanding of this one thing. Well, what are you looking at? Let me share my thoughts with you, Orchid. I'm not trying to say that because we've seen the cruel reality of the world here, we need to accept it. From our point of view, it's only natural to think that most of Rhodes Island's operators have been through unnecessary pain. We shouldn't feel inferior for having grown up in our relative safety, but it isn't an excuse for us to fight it either. Life is the same everywhere. Where we used to live, the only way to get what we wanted was to work hard and earn money. It's actually the same here. We could have chosen to join the logistics department and put in the same effort there, but I chose the path of war. Aren't you afraid to die? I think we're all afraid to die. But, as you've learned in your time here, Orchid, sooner or later you have to fight to defend something. This would be a fine time to say I'm training so hard so that I can be strong enough to defend you, Orchid. But, I'd like you to think about something instead. What kind of life do you want to lead at Rhodes Island? I understand. Um, but I, I, I don't. Good, this is something you'll never have to worry about. Why not eat up instead? Here, you can have mine. Wow, thanks, Spot. <laughs> He's right. You don't have to worry about this stuff, Papa Car. And forgive me for dumping all this on you, Orchid, but the question you asked me is one I've been asking myself a lot since I came to Rhodes Island, so I had a lot to say about it. Well, thanks for that. Oh, wonder of wonders, miracles of miracles. The blessed savior, Orchid, has finally shown me gratitude. Brother Spot, sister or Popcar, such luck you have brought me. You're a dead man. Popcar, we need to get to bed. We have a day. We have a big day tomorrow. Oh, we're done. We're done. Okay. Good night, Spot. Good night, Midnight. Good night. Sweet dreams to the two beautiful ladies. So you're not worried we'll turn out like the guy from your club? <laughs> not to toot my own horn, but I have a lot more confidence as a judge of character these days. Besides, we're on the same team. It's good to get to know each other better, no? Sure, but I never imagined you'd be hung up on all that garbage. Now that I've thought it through, I don't need to trouble myself anymore. I guess. Say, did you use any of those tricks for dealing with women just now? I did indeed. The most important trick of all. Telling the truth. Sounds pretty easy to me. It's important because it's simple. Orchid, when we get back, can Catapult tell me a story? Not tonight. Midnight kept us out too late. Oh. Okay. I'm just glad to see you happy, Orchid. Oh, have I been unhappy lately? Um, I don't know how to say this, but you seem very upset after we left the logistics department. Not now, though. You look very happy. Did I? I guess I did. Thank you, Papa Car. Did I do something? <laughs> you just don't know it yet. Excuse me, are you Orchid? Oh, you are? I'm Sora, with Penguin Logistics. I've heard you're kind of an expert on fashion and pretty handy with a needle and thread. Can I talk to you for a minute? Six twenty-three p.m. inside the Rhodes Island landship. So you decide to carry on as a combat operator. That's too bad, but. It's your call, Orchid. We'll respect it. Yes, it may not be a good fit for me, but it's a special opportunity. I don't want to waste it. That's true. Sitting in the office all day is pretty boring. Maybe I should apply for a transfer and try it out. 
You're dreaming. You wouldn't last two seconds with Doberman. Oh yeah? I've heard about that one. It's pretty cool you made it through her training, Orchid. You get used to it. Anyway, that's all for today. Heading back so early? Yeah, I have a thing. Okay, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <sighs> all these aches. That's what I get for skipping the gym that long. Can't even move my hand to fill out a form. Uh, why did I do this to myself? Orchid! There you are. I've been looking for you. What's the matter? What did Papukar break this time? Nothing. It's midnight. He's sparring with Papukar. You gotta see this. Okay, I'm totally out of it today anyway. What made you want to sign up for fitness training? It's not like you. Call it a change of heart. Huh. Want me to give you a shoulder rub? Okay, out with it. What did you do this time? Whoa, hey, I didn't do anything. I'll believe you for once. What? You seem kind of different lately. Do I? I can't quite put my finger on it. But yeah. Come on. Weren't we going to see or Or, yeah. Come on. Are we going to see the or orchid eat it? Yeah, we are. Ah. You're looking for trouble and you just might find it. All right. Take a sip real quick. Sip. <clears throat> you know, one more. Yeah. Now we resume. Moving forward. <clears throat> 10 21 a.m. Rhodes Island Training Ground. This is it. Too slow. <sighs> but that's enough for today. <sighs> Not bad, Fang. You blocked it this time. I'm glad to see you getting more flexible. Yeah, it's what Instructor Doberman taught me. Not just about footwork, but also about adjusting my speed. I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. Right, you have your natural Karanta speed. It's good for quick attacks, but those aren't worth anything if the enemy blocks them and you have no counter. Anyway, you pass this field exercise. Thanks, Instructor Grace. But the next one will be even harder. I'll be ready. That's the spirit. Bang. Eagle, did you finish your test? How did it go? Huh, I didn't pass. Instructor Fallon has some real sneaky tricks. Don't get discouraged. You'll get them next time. Uh, how about you? Did you pass? Yeah. Nice. Aw, my butt. Bruce, are you okay? Instructor Tess shot my patootie. Hmm. I feel like I can I can do a better cruise voice. Ah, Rockton, 213, thank you for the follow. Huh? Hey, hey to you as well. <clears throat> the Tess was a sniper war between me and Instructor Tess. We had to hide and find each other. I still don't know how she got behind me. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, Uncle Grace. I'll tell you, you really got unlucky. The other sniping instructors just happened to be out for a few days and you got stuck with Tess. How's it going? It's going quite well, thank you for asking. And I hope the same of you. But yeah, we're just going through stories of afternoon right now. Yeah, we're on our last chapter, so we'll probably be wrapping up here pretty soon. Yes, thank you for stopping by, by the way. Even I can't keep track of that phantom. My advice to you is to put the same effort into finding a sniper nest that you put into finding places to nap. Yeah, yeah, laugh it up. I just checked on Hibiscus and Lava. Lava passed, but Hibiscus didn't. They went home already. How did you do? Fang passed. Ah, Fang, you traitor. Why am I a traitor? Uh, I failed again. What is wrong with me? Don't be discouraged, Beagle. You still have plenty of chances. Yeah, it's just a quiz. Nothing to be too upset about. 
and we still have, have a nightmare this afternoon. Uh, what Top is discussing right now? Uh, what topic are we discussing, you mean? But yeah, basically I'm just going through, uh, just going through an event, uh, yeah, an old event of just a, a compilation of stories of things that, you know, just average everyday stuff happening at Rhodes Island, basically. <clears throat> yeah, it's just a quiz. Nothing to be too upset about. And we, oh wait, I already read this. <clears throat> That's right. Instructor Doberman, let you, you let us do your individual test this morning, but the afternoon group field test, that's all her. <sighs> Please, I can already imagine the look on Instructor Doberman's face when she sees my test results. Now you're sorry? No, Instructor Doberman said we could go at our own pace. I'm just a late bloomer. <laughs> But I'm also worried she'll be disappointed in us. Eagle, Cruz. Okay, seriously, don't be too hard on yourselves. We didn't make these tests so you pass them. They're there to tell you what to work on. Wow, it feels awful when a guy tells you straight to your face that he's better than you and you can't even do anything about it. Yeah, if you don't mind, can I say something? By all means, go for it. That's what the chat's here for, after all. It's the truth. There's a huge skill gap between you trainees and us instructors. That's why we're your teachers. That's what we're here for. And even if you haven't noticed it yourself, you made huge strides since you came to Rhodes Island. He's right. Yeah, I guess he is. And really, you girls are doing great. The instructors you went up against are all experts in your respective fields. Do you have any idea how we got where we are? What we've been through? No way. Yeah, yes. Doberman also trained us. Or Doberman alone trained us. <clears throat> Hard to believe as it may be, Doberman today is a hundred times softer than she used to be. Huh? Are we talking about the same Doberman? She's soft? That's not funny, Uncle Grace. I'm not kidding. Grace, my abuela runs up a mountain with a pack twice that size. You really can't handle some light jogging? Balan, you want the enemy to die laughing? Is that what you're going for with these clumsy slapstick attacks? Tess, you falling asleep on me? Hold your guns straight. Don't let me out of your sights. Victor, the enemy doesn't give water breaks. Leah, let's have you learn some basic first aid before you try healing arts. This bandage work is as much of a mess as you are. <sighs> We're done for the day. Give me ten laps around the training room, you hear me? Sir, yes, sir. I can't hear you. Sir, yes, sir. That bad, huh? The point is that Instructor Dobeman may not be the strongest fighter herself. Hey, I'll toot my own horn and say I've got a 50-50 shot against her at this point. Come on, cut that out. Hey, a little self-confidence is good for the soul. Anyway... Doberman may not be the strongest fighter around, but the tactics and strategies she pulled out of her time with the Bolivarian army are overpowering. Bolivar? Yeah, like the Bolivarian civil war you see on the news, that Bolivar. We all wonder how Doberman got to be as great as she is, but she never talks about much, much that much about her time in Bolivar. Uh, anyway, at the time, Rhodes Island was just getting along, and they needed some... They really needed some talent, then how do I put this? Doberman was a real soldier back then. What does that mean? Like, we're all pretty awesome here at Rhodes Island, but our overall atmosphere is still pretty relaxed, right? We get to have our own little lives. Okay, let me put it this way. If you were back with us then, Cruz, you'd never end up napping in a utility closet. The thought wouldn't even cross your mind. Huh? That sounds like a nightmare. You get what I'm saying? Doberman's way different now. Really, it's hard to imagine that the person Instructor Grace is talking about is our Instructor Doberman. Yeah, Doberman works us so hard, and she's kind of scary, but once you get to know her, she, you can tell she really cares about us. She always really cared about people, even back then. It's just, sometimes what you do manages means more than why you do it. Alright, that's enough chatting for now. You girls pack up, go take a shower, have lunch, and get ready for the group training this afternoon. So, uh, what about you? 
Me? I'm going to go gather up the other teachers and we'll take your test results to Doberman. Oh, I can do that for you. Really? You can? Sure. We'll pass along Instructor Doberman's room on the way to the cafeteria. Oh, I'll go too. Um, I'll pass. I'm in no hurry to see Instructor Doberman. Thanks a lot, ladies. Oh, and uh, don't tell Doberman what I just told you. Ever. Instructor Doberman! Oh, what are you two doing here? We're bringing you some test results and I guess some other information from Instructor Grace. I passed! Let's see here. Oh, good. The others, Cruz, Beagle, and Hibiscus didn't pass. Did Lava? Sorry. It's okay, you're making progress. Go on back and tell Cruz to be ready for this afternoon. <laughs> Go on, rest up. Okay. Hey, Instructor Doberman, are you cleaning your room? Yes, I do so regularly. Can I help you? Huh? Why? Um, sometimes you just want to give back to your teacher, you know? Oh, I'll help too. Uh, unless we would get in the way? No, not at all. I'm just a little surprised. I thought you were scared of me. No way. I have a lot of inst inst respect for you, Instructor. Me too. Alright, I'll take the help. Thanks. Okay. There's a lot more stuff in here than I expected. Oh, is that odd? No, I just... Always thought of you as an instructor with a tidy room, the type who wouldn't keep a lot of stuff. I really didn't bring that much with me when I first came to Rhodes Island. But I've been living here for a few years now. Oh, right. Instructor Doberman joined Rhodes Island a long time ago? Yes, compared to most operators, it's been a while. Why did you join up, Instructor? Oh, sorry, is that a bad question? No, it's just... Now's not the time. We'll talk about it later. Okay. Are you curious too? Eh? Yes, I am. I really want to know more about you, ins Instructor. Know more about me? Huh. <laughs> Might as well start on the wardrobe. Hey, Instructor Doberman, is this a uniform? Huh? Yes. It's a souvenir I kept for my time in the army. Wow, it's very cool. It is. So, which side did you fight on? You know a bit about Bolivar, huh? And I don't remember that. And I don't... And don't I remember that Beagle is also of Bolivarian origin? You emigrated to Colombia, isn't that right? Yes, but I've only ever heard about Bolivar from my parents. I'd love to hear more about it. Oh, but it's not like I just came because... Relax. Even if you did, it's okay. Come help me with a bedding. Okay. There we go. Thanks. There are currently three factions in Bolivar. The nominal, official government is a puppet controlled by Lithanian, as they led the forces that won the war against Colombia. Then the autonomous government resulted from a parliamentary split. They've been looking for a chance to seize power. They're well-founded and offer a chance to... Eh offer a challenge to the puppet government. Last, we have the Bolivarian resistance, an uprising made of ordinary people fed up with the struggles of the powerful. I serve the autonomous government at the rank of colonel. Wow, a colonel? Instructor Doberman is awesome! That's a high rank. Yes, it is. I'll wipe down the top of the wardrobe. There must be lots of dust up there. Uh, <laughs> hmm, that might have been a little bit loud. Hmm. I might need to tone that down in editing. Oops, uh, something fell down. It's a bunch of metal tags. Huh? These are nameplates. Nameplates? Like the ID cards we have here at Rhodes Island? Yes. 
Soldiers in the army get these plates issued with their name and unit number for identification. Ah, really? Can I see them? Take a look. Uh, Len, Juan, Jose. I can read the names, but I can't remember. I can't make sense of these abbreviations. Those indicate some things about the units they served in. Don't worry about them. If you have their nameplates, does that mean they're... Yes, they're all dead. Oh, so were they important people to you? Important? Colonel, your men died bravely. Don't grieve for them. Their deaths have saved my career and yours. You won't be reprimanded by the brass. An investigation? No one will remember these things. The truth, Colonel... People need pretty, or at least decent results. They don't care about the truth. Colonel, remember your place, and don't forget who it was who raised you up from a common soldier to the command you hold today. I didn't know them well. We barely spoke. But, yes, they are important to me. Huh? We're just about done cleaning. Come here. Um, did I do something wrong, Instructor? No, I wasn't trying to hide them. That's why they were just kind of left up there. But your questions got me thinking, so I want to talk to you too. Oh, well, I'm honored. Relax, just have a seat. I will tell you about my past at some point, but not now. For now, I just want to ask you a question. What do you think is the defining characteristic of a soldier? Ah, uh, is this a test? No, there are no wrong answers. <sighs> Let's see... Um, combat proficiency? Most people learn to fight. The operators here all do, and you too will. It's not something unique. Is it being able to use some kind of awesome weapon? It's true that many manufactured weapons are readily accessible to the military. But, as you've seen here at Rhodes Island, there's always people who have other ways of acquiring such things. There's a lot of them? Yes, that is a big one. The military usually has a numerical advantage unmatched by civilian organizations. Rhodes Island today can only compare to the standing army of maybe a backwater nomadic city in a small country. What? I thought Rhodes Island was really powerful. For a non-governmental organization, Rhodes Island has done very well for itself, but we couldn't dream of challenging a state. But we have such amazing operators, like Skyfire, she goes swoosh with her staff and then everything goes foom. But there's only so much you can do in the face of an overwhelming numbers. Do you remember Gus from the garrison? He was the toughest guy there by far, but if a dozen men ganged up on him... Exactly. Numbers change the calculation even for a mediocre combatant. One beagle couldn't take on Skyfire, but what about ten or a hundred beagles? Think about it. A uh, uh, hundred and me? We could crush Skyfire. Sorry, Skyfire. <laughs> exactly. The number of times a lone individual used, has used her individual strength to influence warfare on a national scale is zero in the entire history of, of human conflict. Anyway, to digress a little, there's a reason I haven't been systematically explaining the army to you in your prep courses. There's just no value in it. My greatest hope is that you'll never have a chance to apply any of this knowledge. This little lesson here is completely voluntary. So, numbers aren't the answer either. Well, it's an answer, but it's more of a descriptor of the military itself rather than a soldier. Hmm. Um, is it... Following orders? What makes you say that? I just thought back to our time at the garrison. The captain said that as a soldier, you have to follow orders no matter what. Correct. Huh? I got it right? You did. The, the finding characteristic of a soldier is obedience to the chain of command. There's a saying, the best soldier is one who can't think. An army does not need soldiers to think, only to follow orders. But is that kind of cruel? War is cruel, and if you must engage in it, giving up thought could be a kind of relief. But... Isn't it cruel that you have these questions at all? Aren't soldiers human? 
Obviously, a soldier is not a machine. He comes closer to death than anyone, and he knows better than anyone what exactly it is he is facing. Can a soldier still muster up morale when he knows he's carrying out an incredibly stupid order? I think... No? Of course not. So, when faced with such a situation, you have two choices. Do you know what they are? No. One is to prevent the soldier from noticing the order is incredibly stupid. But that's difficult. The men on the front lines know exactly what kind of danger they are facing. You can't fool them. If you could, you could have made a better choice. And that other choice is just to issue the correct orders. Huh? It may sound a bit silly, but it's the truth. How else do you get a, sort of, a soldier to surrender his inclination to question orders? How do you get him to relax and trust in his in command? It's simple, just issue convincing correct orders from the beginning. But not everyone makes that right choice. After leaving the autonomous government, I moved to join the resistance, but in the end I left, because it wasn't any different there. Whoa, Instructor Doverman even joined the resistance? Yes, there's a picture in the second drawer under the wardrobe. Take a look. Wow, you look so cool back then, Instructor. I want to see. Whoa, she did. Put it back where and you're done. <sighs> Things didn't go well there either, and eventually I left Bolivar and came to Rhodes Island. My expectations were low, but I was pleasantly surprised. The soldier knows when he's been given a stupid order, but he might not know what to do about it. That's another reason you need the right orders. And Rhodes Island provides those. Dang, you get what she's talking about? Kinda. Don't worry about it too much, it's just me waxing philosophical. The main point is here, you could stand to appreciate Rhodes Island a bit more. You can safely give yourselves to Rhodes Island. Even if you don't think about what you're fighting for, you won't lose anything. There's an age-old question. If we know we have to move forward, but forward is always in front of us, how, which way, yeah, how do we know which way to move? <clears throat> There's no answer to that question, but you can at least trust in Rhodes Island when they tell you which way is forward. You can't go wrong moving that way. Trust in Rhodes Island. I think I get what you're trying to tell us. Yeah, basically Rhodes Island is a good place? Yeah, that, that's about it. It's a pie-in-the-sky paradise that a few idealists are tr desperately trying to keep going for the sake of a little hope. I know Rhodes Island is good, but is it really that good? <laughs> it might take a while for you girls to realize it. Alright, that's enough cleaning and chattering. It's time for you both to get some chow. Ah, oh no, it's almost one! Yep, thanks for helping me clean up. If you have something to eat, I'll be right along. Okay then, thanks for the lesson, Instructor Doberman. I need some time to digest it. Me too. Don't take it too seriously. Also, I changed my mind. I think I might put this on one of my tests. And if you two feed me back exactly what I just said, you get a zero. Uh, no way. Uh, I'll think very carefully about it. Uh, thanks for, again for your lesson today, Instructor Doberman. Instructor, huh? Somehow, I'm getting used to teaching. I had many students, many of whom have long surpassed me, and others, had, and others have bright futures. I've found a new purpose in Rhodes Island. I'm willing to believe in the future that Tommy and Dr. Calcite have painted for me, but... Alan. Juan. Jose. My roots are still in Bolivar. I'll go back someday and see for myself. Someday. All right. And with that, that is the end. Just had to double check there. That is the end of Stories of Afternoon. There we go. Wrong room. But yes, we are just about on time. Yes, we could have gone a little bit later, but I think, you know, this is already what I had planned upon, so I suppose this is what we will survive with. So, let's see, what do we want to say and do as we wrap up here? 
So, today has been Arc Nights. Yeah, that is the end of the streaming week. So, ah, wait, first, before we do anything else, if anyone has any raid suggestions, I would love to get uh, a suggestion. If not, I can find a target on my own. And now that I've said that, let's get back to what I was saying. So yes, so, Arc Nights done for today. So yes, next week we'll be seeing more of the usual schedule, I do believe. So yes, so Monday and Saturday will be more Arc Nights at roughly 2 p.m. Central, probably closer to 2.30 p.m. Central for Saturday. And then on Wednesday, we'll be playing some more Coffee Talk with Sheppy Sheps. And yeah, that should be that. And it looks like we don't have any suggestions. So, I'll give one last chance here if anyone wants to chime in before we're done. <coughs> Sit. So yes, no last minute raid suggestions it looks like. So I think tonight we'll go and visit Shep Sheps, the collab partner previously mentioned. Yeah, playing some uh, Bukura with uh, Boodles O Doodles, it seems like. So yes, so, Kepi Sheps, longtime friend of the stream, the Explosion VTuber, the one and only, so yes, I don't know, maybe not only, but she's the one as far as I'm concerned, the definitive Explosion VTuber. So yes, so, all that being said, it is time for the raid. So, bu -bu -bum. let's try to spell her name properly, I've written it many times. Um, there we go. So, the customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. And so, thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you have had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much, and farewell. Let us get this raid underway.